Hey guys, this is Martin. We are in the Burp extension mini series and today's extension is the HTTP request smuggler. So this is a super useful extension for HTTP request smuggling. You can read up more on that on the Burp on the Portspringer website. Um, basically, you go to the BAP store and you will simply install this extension. It's very straightforward. And then once it's being installed, you also install something called the flow extension. Um, flow extension helps you to see the requests as they go through. Okay, like for example here, you see like all these posts which are being made and the, the return code and stuff like that. So it's extremely useful in, in real time. And then here you basically also see um, if a smuggling request was successful. But that's that's not part of this video. So I, I just want you to install these two extensions. So the flow extension as well as the HTTP request smuggler. And then I show you quickly how, how this works. I've done this in, 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 in ahead of, of the video uh, for time constraints. But basically what you do is you have a request like a post request um, so you're trying to get request into a post request uh, in order to try to find request smuggling vulnerabilities and manually this can be very tedious and very burdensome so you can simply right click it go to extensions HTTP request smuggler and then you basically hang on let me let me show you this again because I've already done this. So you have a get request. You change change that into a post request, right? And then you do extensions HTTP request smuggler, and then you see you say smuggle probe basically. So that's for HTTP version one not one, right? Like for version two, you would basically use this one, okay? But those are the. This is basically to find if it's vulnerable to HTTP request smuggling. Um, either of those, depending on the protocol. And then you head over and it's doing its work and it took like 167 seconds. And then if it finds a vulnerability, you can head to the dashboard and then you see here is a possible HTTP request smuggling vulnerability, right? And it's a TE transfer encoding CL content length uh, vulnerability effectively. And then what you do is you simply take that first request, send it to repeater. And then from there, you then go to extensions again. And this time you actually launch the attack, right? Yeah, this menu is different now because that menu only appears once it actually found a vulnerability. So then you take it like this. And then um, this orange portion here is the one you're going to change. So we don't need a collaborator domain in this case. And we just want to send like a G post, right? Like a G post because it's not existent, the G. G post, post is existent, but G post is not. So we want to smuggle a G post to the back end. And once we're done, we simply hit attack. And then it's going to fire up all these things. And you can see here it, it was successful because the back end responds with unrecognized method G post. So um, this may be over your heads. At that, at that point in time, so I'm, I'm probably doing more videos on request smuggling and, and what it actually is and how it works. But this was just to demonstrate the extension and how easy that extension can be used to find vulnerabilities. I hope this makes sense and I see you in the next video.